This video is on section 3.6, zeros of polynomials. The main topics in this section, there are a lot of theorems. Uh, you, the one that you really are going to have to know by name is the rational zeros theorem because it'll be referenced in problems. Um, but before that, we'll talk about two theorems called the remainder and factor theorem. We also have a couple problems that deal directly with them. Then we'll get to the rational zeros theorem and finally really the ultimate goal of polynomials is to be able to factor polynomials that are of higher degree meaning how do you factor something with an x cubed in it if you don't have one of your old techniques like factoring out a common factor or factoring out um, it's not called by parts by grouping factoring by grouping um, so we'll see how to do that at the end, what goes into it. I will say that this topic might very well be the hardest of test one, and it tends to be the one of the hardest ones in the entire course. So bear that in mind when we get to it. I know that it's a lot of stuff going into a, something pretty quickly. But we'll talk first, we'll state the remainder and factor theorem. Um, the uh, remainder theorem, this is the first one here. I didn't write on the name, so I should definitely do that. And the remainder theorem says, let f of x be a polynomial and c be any real number. Then when f of x is decide divided by x minus c, it has a remainder of f of c. Right. Um, so I'll just very briefly remind you uh, at the end of the last video when we did synthetic division we were doing f of x divided by x minus c is when we could do it and if you remember the remainder was always a number that remainder you get is exactly the same as if you plugged in c to your polynomial and we'll see how that works in these problems uh, one other thing that builds on to this is the factor theorem. It says let f of x be a polynomial then x equals c is a zero of f of x. And so if we plug in c we get zero if and only if x minus c is a factor of f. Now what you are used to is if x minus c is a factor, then x equals c is a zero. You're actually used to that part. This is going backwards. It says x equals c is a zero if x minus c is a factor. All right, so that's the one you're used to. The new one is x minus c is a factor if x equals c is a zero. And we'll see how it works. We'll use it. Um, in every problem in this section. Right, but first question, it really relates to doing both of these things. Using both of these theorems, I wanted to keep it on. All right, so what this asks is, is x minus 6 a factor of x to the 5th minus 3x to the 4th minus 7x cubed plus 4x squared plus 6x plus 10,044? And there's actually a little hint here. Give your give the remainder when divided to support your answer. All right. So one thing I want to point out right away is that you really don't want to have to divide this huge polynomial by x minus six, even when synthetic division. It takes a long time. It's not impossible, but a little error will mess it up. So what we want to do is use these theorems. Um, and really what they both ultimately say is if we plug in x equals c, which in this case is 6, right? because we're thinking about x minus c, right? that's in both of them. If we plug in x minus, or sorry, if we plug in c, which is 6, what is f of 6? What does f of 6 equal? All right, 
calculator. So this one, even plugging this in in the calculator, you'd probably want to do it by hand. I mean, do it in the calculator, but I'll start by writing it out. We got 6 to the 5th. f of 6 equals 6 to the 5th minus 3 times 6 to the 4th minus 7 times 6 cubed plus 4 times 6 squared plus 6 times 6 plus 10,044. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in the calculator. Bear with me. I don't have this memorized. Um, I'm going to write it down. 6 to the 5th was our first part, minus 3 times 6 raised to the 4th, minus 7 times 6 cubed, plus 4 times 6 squared, plus 6 times 6, and then finally plus 10,044. All right, if we plug all that in, we get this huge number, 12,600. All right, what this is telling you, you can answer both questions here. What is the remainder and is it a factor? Okay, so the remainder is exactly what number we got out. It's 12,600. Okay, the remainder is 12,600. Right, that's what the remainder theorem says. When f of x is divided by x minus c, in this case x minus 6, the remainder is f of c, or f of 6. Okay, so the remainder is 12,600. The way this relates to the factor theorem is the factor theorem pretty much says if you plug it in and get 0, then it is a factor. It is not 0. So it's not 0, which means x minus 6 is not a factor. So it really boils down to just plugging in the number and seeing what happens. Now, one thing that's a lot better about this theorem as opposed to using synthetic division, if you wanted to do that, is you don't need to really use um, <clears throat> synthetic division specifically. All right, so what I mean by that is this next one. Now you don't have to have x minus c. You can have a number in there. So this one asks, is 2x minus 7 a factor of 8x cubed plus 40x squared plus 14x minus 882? Right. So you, the one thing you have to be careful here is you want to still plug in a number and compare them both. But you don't want to just plug in the 7 because of what's going on with the 2. The way you can kind of think about how to plug in is if you set this equal to 0 up here, x minus 6 equals 0, you get x equals 6. So that's telling you what to plug in. We just bypass that part because we're, we're used to it and we did it with synthetic division. Uh, but if you want to figure out what to plug in for this one, you would set the 2x minus 7 equal to 0. And if you add the 7 and divide by 2, we get x equals 7 halves. And we want to do exactly what we did from before. We want to plug in this number to our polynomial and see what that gives us. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in. 
we got eight. I'm just gonna visually plug it in and then use my calculator. Seven halves to the third power plus 40 times seven halves squared plus 14 times seven halves minus 882. Once again, I'll go ahead and plug that in the calculator. Since the fraction 7 halves is 3.5, if you want to plug in 3.5, that's fine. That's probably what I'll do. It's a little easier. Uh, just make sure you only type in decimals if they end. Okay, so we've got 8 times 3.5 cubed plus 40 times 3.5 squared plus 14 times 3.5 minus 882 and you see this time we get 0 and so what that is telling us is that if we divide by 2x minus 7 we will get zero. Okay, so the remainder is zero, and because it is zero, x two x minus seven is in fact a factor. Of our polynomial. So once again, that's what this is telling us is 7 halves is a 0, so 2x minus 7 is a factor. Okay, but you can use any number here. The one thing that the way this um, theorem, rash, uh, not rational, remainder and factor theorem work, it's only going to work if your x power is 1. But you can have any number here, any number here. You can have 3x plus 22 or something, whatever. It'll work. Right, but all you're looking for is whether you get a 0 there. Right, so the rational zeros theorem kind of works alongside it. You know, Think about what we did in the second one. We figured out something was a factor, but there's no way you'd randomly guess. Oh, I think 2x minus 7 is a factor of this to try to factor it. Um, so what the rational zeros theorem tells you is what numbers to test to be a factor. Uh, the theorem written down, is it looks kind of weird, uh, but a, a, the reason why it's going to be called the rational zeros theorem, um, a rational number is a real number that's represented as a fraction. So they can be a whole number, because we can always have the denominator be 1, uh, but any fraction a whole number over a whole number is a rational number. Uh, things like pi and the square root of 2 are not rational numbers. You won't run into them using this. Okay, so we have let this standard thing be our polynomial. Remember that from before. It's just the same notation. And p is any factor of the constant term, a0. And q is any factor of the leading coefficient a n. If r is a rational 0 of f, then r it can be written as p over q. Right, so I'll remind you p, even though it's written here, is a factor of the constant term, which is the number by itself. And q is a factor of the leading coefficient. And remember, the leading coefficient is the number multiplying the largest power of x. Nothing else matters when you do this theorem. Whatever is in between, it, whatever the degree actually is, doesn't matter. Okay. But you want to be very careful when you read these problems on the homework, is they are straightforward um, and it's just asking you to use this theorem. 
It's not asking you to figure out any zeros. Okay, so the, the problem says use the rational zeros theorem to list all possible rational zeros of the function f of x equals 8x to the 8th plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 9. All right, so the two things we got to care about are factors of the constant and factors of the leading coefficient. Our constant is 9. Right, that is the number without anything any x or t or whatever our variable is, and the leading coefficient is the number multiplying the largest power of x, which is eight here. All right, so what, what I like to do, the way I like to set this up, I like to just start by setting up a fraction. And on the top of the fraction, I'm gonna put the factors of nine, factors of the constant, And on the bottom, I'm going to put the factors of the leading coefficient, factors of 8. All right, so factors be meaning, think about two numbers that multiply to this number. What are they? But you don't need to write the ones repeated over and over again. So some factors of 9 are 1 and 9. 1 times 9 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Only write 3 once, and that's it. Now, factors of 8. 1 times 8 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8. And that's it. If there's no other factors of 8. There's no other factors of 9. All right. Now, what we do to form our answers is we have to take every combination, meaning we can have 1 over 1, we can have 1 over 8, we can have 1 over 2, we can have 1 over 4, and so on. The way I like to think about it is just matching. 1 on the top goes with 1 on the bottom all the way through. Since there's 3 on the top and 4 on the bottom, there's going to be 12 options. And these are the possible rational zeros. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just write them off like I did. I like to pick one on the top, go through the bottom, and then move over my number. 1 over 1, 1 over 8, 1 over 2, 1 over 4. Then move over to 9 and run through the bottom. We got 9 over 1, 9 over 8, 9 over 2, 9 over 4, and then we ran through those, now we do three and do the same thing. Three over one, three over eight, three over two, and three over four. All right, so that's actually only half of the possible rational zeros because negative numbers also would count. Negative one times negative nine works, negative three times three works, so what I do, why I didn't say that before, is all you do to fix that is put a plus or minus on each. Now you do not want to forget the negative ones. But like I said, it's the reason we include the negative ones is because negative two negative numbers multiply as well to a positive number. Once again, 1 times 9 is 9, but negative 1 times negative 9 is also 9. Now, as far as homework goes, I'm pretty sure there's not one anywhere near this long. You don't have to type this many in on the homework. I just really wanted to go over the possibilities and what everything looks like. But that is it. The one thing I will say, um, on the homework problems, you can actually type in plus minus. The way I type in plus minus is type hit the plus sign with the minus sign and then your number and it will come out on top. Uh, but it's totally it's totally up to you. I think there was once one problem that actually made you type the plus minus and I got rid of that. So you can type the plus minus or not.
All right, but these this is our main tool along with the factor theorem to factor polynomials of higher degree. All right, so uh, just to kind of overview what we're going to do before I go through the steps here, I'll go back up. Um, the polynomials will look something like this. Let f of x equal x cubed minus 10x squared plus 17x plus 28. Um, some of the problems will give you a zero, some will not. But what we're trying to do is factor this. And if we factor it, then we can find all the zeros. So it kind of works hand in hand. And at this point, you've probably never seen how to factor this, and that makes sense because you really need all this stuff. You cannot factor this by grouping. There's nothing in common to factor. All right, so it boils down to this. First thing you want to do is use the rational zeros theorem to find possible rational zeros, what we just covered. Once again, the number, the amount you will have here won't be anywhere near this. It'll be more like four, six, maybe eight to check, and it's pretty easy to check in your calculator as I'll show you. Uh, then the next step, you want to determine a zero by plugging in the possible rational zeros until one works. What we mean by one works is that you want to plug in all the possible rational zeros until one of them gives you zero. Because if we get zero, then we know how to make a factor. And we'll divide f of x by this zero, x minus r. Because you, act you actually have to divide here to figure out how it factors. And so actually do polynomial division. And then once you're there, it depends on what you're left with. If your quotient is degree two or less, you know how to factor those. Degree two means the biggest power is x squared. You can factor that. If, the factor, if you can't factor it, you can use the quadratic formula. That just depends. All right, but we'll go ahead and look at it. All right, so this first one here, if it's like the directions say, and I have it emphasized over here as well, find the zeros and fully factor the following polynomials. Do not forget about complex zeros. So we talked about complex numbers in the first section. Now they make their comeback. It doesn't mean you'll have any, but you might. All right, so this one we have f of x equals x cubed minus 10x squared plus 17x plus 28. And it is known that x equals negative 1 is a 0 of f. What that means is if we plug in negative 1, we get 0. What we want to do is find all the zeros and use the factor theorem to factor it. Right, now one thing I'll remind you that we talked about before is that the number of zeros is no greater than the degree. So if we can find two more zeros, because right, we we're already given one, if we can find two more zeros, we are done and there would be nothing else to do. But the important thing with starting this problem when you're given a zero is using this information right away. This is cutting down the amount of work you have to do by a lot. Um, and it comes from the factor theorem. Factor theorem it says x equals negative one is a zero. Right, so remember what the factor theorem says. I'll scroll up and remind you. x equals c is a zero if and only if x minus that number is a factor of f. Right, so what this is telling you us is x minus negative 1 is a factor of f. Um, and I'll simplify this to x plus 1. Don't want to keep the minus. Right, so once we know a factor, the thing we want to do is divide 
our f of x by this factor. You can label the steps here. This is number two. The first step was to get a zero, but we were told that. So we want to divide by x plus one. And like I mentioned in the previous section, synthetic division, when it pops up, will save you time, and we can use synthetic division for this one because it's x plus or minus a number. So remember with synthetic division, we put our c, which is a negative 1 in the corner. We list off our coefficients. We got 1x cubed. We got negative 10x squared. We got 17x. We got 28 as our number. And we know what's going to happen below here is the power is all going to decrease by 1. So let's go ahead and do it. We drop the first one straight down. That is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. We add these together. Negative 10 plus negative 1 is negative 11. Then negative 1 times negative 11 is positive 11. We add those together. We get 28. And negative 1 times 28 is negative 28. And if you add these together, you should get 0, which we do. All right. Now the fact that we knew negative 1 was a 0 meant the remainder needs to be 0. Whenever you figure out a 0 and you divide, the remainder should be 0 every time. If it's not 0, you made a mistake somewhere along the way. But what's really important here is what happens after we divide. Um, so I'll remind you of the one of the two forms, f of x equals q of x times g of x plus r of x. So g of x is... Let me put that above, It'll make more sense. The g of x is what we divided by, which is x plus 1. The q of x, our quotient, is what's over here. And our r of x is our remainder, which is 0. And that's why getting 0 here is so important, is when we plug all this stuff in, q of x is x squared minus 11x plus 28. And g of x was x plus 1. And r of x is 0. Right? If this thing wasn't 0, this wouldn't be factored because we'd have two things multiplied but something added. Because this is 0, that's what makes this factor. That's why we need 0 so badly. So I'm just going to write x squared minus 11x plus 28 and x plus 1. Right, so it factors it for us. Right, once we're here, we want to keep factoring it. We can factor this. x squared minus 11x plus 28. We can factor this. Right, and if you can't factor it, then you have the quadratic formula at your disposal. Right, but we can factor this. x squared minus 11x plus 28 will be x minus 7 and x minus 4. So we've got our x plus 1 at the end. And remember this all equals f of x. And what you'll notice here is this is the factored form of x, f of x, because all the stuff inside is x minus or x plus. Our leading coefficient is 1 here, which is fine. You don't have to have a different number. Uh, but this is f of x completely factored. And 
And then the question is, what are the zeros? Well, the zeros here, we have seven. All right, we take the opposite sign because it's just x, or we set it equal to zero. We have four, and we have negative one. Then depending on the question, what it asks, you have did everything. All right, you found the zeros, seven, four, negative one. You found the factored form, which is right here. You know, at this stage of the game, when we're doing problems like this, that's all you need to worry about. All right, so the next one's more of a, if you had to do this on your own, how do you do it kind of question. Right, it's just a polynomial f of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus 3x plus 1. We want to factor it. We want to find all the zeros, and we are not given a zero. The question is, how do we do that? Well, we start by needing to figure out a zero, and we do that using the rational zeros theorem and plugging in. So the first step here, we need to find a zero. Start by using the rational zeros theorem. Start by using the rational zeros theorem. And the rational theorems, that's our p over q thing. That's how most people like to think about it, which is fine. p is a factor of 1, our constant term. And q is a factor of the leading term, which is also 1, our leading coefficient. And all the factors of 1 are just 1 and 1, like we talked about before. Don't forget the negative sign. So we have plus or minus. And since we're actually plugging these in, you want to make sure you just kind of write them out. 1 over 1 is 1. We have positive 1 and negative 1. All right, what we want to do is plug in numbers from this list until one of them makes 0. One of them must work in order for us to factor this. And this is what I was talking about before when we actually use the rational zero theorem to figure out a zero. Your list is rather small. Really, it can't be smaller than this, but you know, that's just how this one worked out. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in one. Um, this one, since the numbers are small, I'm just going to do it by hand, but I'll show you how you can do this quickly in the calculator if you have a longer list. We plug in one, we got one cubed plus one squared minus three times one plus one. One cubed is one, one squared is one, three times one is three minus three plus one. One plus one minus three plus one is zero. Because that is zero, we stop there. All right, what that's telling us is what we plugged in is a zero. X equals one is a zero of F. Basically, at this point, we have done this red line. So as you can see what I mean, it's quite a bit of work to get to this red line. If you're given this, make use of it. Don't try to make the problem more than it is. All right, x equals 1 is a 0 of f. That means x minus 1 is a factor. And we want to now do what we did last time. So remember, once we figured out what a factor was, we divided and we used synthetic division. And I'm going to once again use synthetic division, divide by 
x minus 1 using synthetic division. All right, our c is 1, but 1 in our corner. And the numbers up top, 1 for x cubed, 1 for x squared. Actually, that looks kind of running together. Let me use a different color. We got 1 for x cubed, 1 for x squared, negative 3 for x, and 1 for the number. We have our bar. What goes under it? Like dropping down by 1 power, x squared, and then x, and then the number, and then the remainder, which should be 0 when we plug it in, when we do this. So let's go through the procedure. Bring the 1 down, we get 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Goes over here. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And then 1 plus negative 1 is 0. So we get exactly what we needed. We needed a zero here for the remainder. We can rest assured we did everything right. And we'll use the form that we used last time to start factoring f of x equals q of x times g of x plus r of x. Our q of x, our quotient is x squared plus 2x minus 1. Our g of x is what we divided by, which is x minus 1. And the remainder is 0, so I'm not going to write it just like it would have been last time. The plus 0 doesn't do anything, of course. So just leave that alone. And now the goal becomes like last time. We want to be able to factor this part. Once again, this one, the power on x is 2, which means we can factor it. In it or if we cannot factor it, we can use a quadratic formula. But this one doesn't factor. You do have to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. The reason we're using the quadratic formula, we want to know when it equals 0. So x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. When we use the quadratic formula, hopefully you remember that. I'm going to write it down here. But this will probably be the only time I write it down because you're supposed to be familiar with this already. Um, we get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Go ahead and plug this stuff in. b is 2. We got negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4. a is 1 and c is negative 1 over 2 times a, which is 1. And simplify. Let's simplify inside the square root first. We have 4 plus 4. Four plus 4 is 8. And the question now you want to ask, can I simplify the square root? And we can. The square root of 8 is square root of 4 times square root of 2. And the square root of 4 will come out as a 2. All right, so one thing I want to mention here, you can simplify this because you have a 2 in common in every spot. 
If you didn't have the two right here, you couldn't cancel these out. You have to be able to cancel them out everywhere. So we got one, one, one. If we write down what we are left with, we got negative one plus or minus the square root of two. Since it's dividing by one, we don't need to write that. And at this point, I'm going to separate them out. We have negative one plus square root of two and negative one minus square root of two. All right, so what this quadratic formula does, it does it in reverse order of what we did last time. Last time we factored it and then found the zeros. The quadratic formula finds your zeros first. Right, and I'll remind you, these aren't only the, the only two zeros. We have to make sure we use our original zero, which was th one as well. We have three zeros. We have one. We got negative one plus the square root of two and negative one minus the square root of two. But like we mentioned earlier in the previous problem and before, the degree here is three. So if you find three zeros, you are done. There's definitely no more. So those are the <clears throat> zeros. Now to factor it, you can factor it from the zeros. That's not how you spell factor. And so remember it. When we factor a polynomial, we have the leading coefficient out front. I'm just going to leave that as a for the a second, but that's in the original problem. Then inside each parenthesis is x minus the zero. So we got x minus one. We get x minus. Because you have things joined here by plus and minus, make sure you use another parenthesis. Negative one plus square root of two. And then times by x minus negative one minus square root of two. And I'll simplify this and write it a little neater since I have more room. So f of x equals a x minus one if you distribute the minus through inside each one, it changes the sign on each part. That's all you want to do to simplify. You don't want to try to multiply anything out. Just distribute the minus through. We got x plus 1 minus square root of 2 and x plus 1 plus square root of 2. So the last thing you want to do here is figure out a, but a is in the original problem. It is the leading coefficient. And you see the leading coefficient here is 1. Now you don't have to actually figure it out like we did before with those other problems. a is 1. I'm just going to go ahead and erase that and put in 1. Right, but that is our polynomial factored. And like I said at the beginning, now I feel like you probably definitely can see this. These tend to be some of, if not the longest problems in the entire course. There's a lot going on in them and I understand. Um, one thing you'll notice about the homework is a lot of the problems are geared this way. You know, I'm, I'm mainly interested in that you can follow the steps of what you're doing, but it is important to be able to do the whole thing without giving the initial, you know, push. So don't think that this might not be something that's on the test. It's just not that it's, you know, it's not going to be the main focus of the test. Um, so the last thing here, the last topic here, the fundamental theorem of algebra and factoring polynomials with complex zeros. All right, so these are all going to be set up if you have a polynomial and you are told you are dealing with complex zeros, at least as far as being told you have a complex zero, 
it, it's going to be exactly that. You will be told. You won't see any problems like this where you're supposed to get a complex zero first because you can't do that. Right. And this really comes down to two things. Uh, one thing is the fundamental theorem of algebra. The fundamental theorem of algebra says let f be a polynomial of degree n, then f has n real or complex zeros, counting multiplicities, meaning you could have one repeated. What this is saying is if you figure out the number of zeros, if you're including complex numbers, it's going to exactly equal your degree. Okay, so the ones up here that we did both had three real zeros. They had no complex zeros. They matched the degree. The one that we're going to do here is degree three, but we will not have three real zeros, but we'll have three total zeros. Now, in order to do anything with complex numbers, you don't want to try to divide. You can't divide with synthetic division, and you don't want to try polynomial division with a complex number. Um, so this little theorem helps you out a lot. It says f of x, let f of x be a polynomial with real coefficients. That means only real numbers here. You won't see an i in the formula of f of x or g of x. And suppose a plus b i is a complex zero of f, then its complex conjugate is also a zero of f. This is automatic. But you only use this if you are told a complex zero. We got an example here, g of x equals x cubed plus 17x squared plus 140x plus 294. And we want to find all the zeros. We're going to find three zeros and fully factor the polynomials with the given zeros. Or, sorry, with the given zero. All right, so we are told negative 7 plus 7i is a zero. The very, very first thing you want to do is write because this is a complex number, its conjugate negative seven minus seven i is also a zero. Okay, so that's exactly what this says. If you have a complex zero, then its complex conjugate is also a zero. Now the main bulk of these kinds of questions isn't really geared similar to the last one. It's this first preliminary step, which is figuring out what to divide by. You do not want to divide by anything with an I in it. It's very, very challenging. And what we divide by is built on the fact that each of these zeros means there's a factor. So we're figuring out what it, we need to divide by first. Since negative 7 plus 7i is a 0, x minus negative 7 plus 7i is a factor, and x minus negative, did I, I went a little dyslexic, didn't I? The complex conjugate of negative 7 plus 7i is negative 7 minus 7i. My apologies. The negative 7 minus 7i is a zero, which means x minus negative seven minus seven i is also a factor. What I'm gonna first do is just simplify this like I did with the end of the last problem, distribute the minus signs through, because what we're gonna, what we're gonna do next, you really wanna do that. We got x plus seven minus seven i, and we get x plus seven plus seven i. All right, so here's the super important thing. You don't wanna divide by either one of these, but they are both factors. If you have two factors of something and you multiply them, they are still a factor. We want to multiply these. When you multiply these, because of the way the complex conjugate works, you'll see all the i's go away. If we multiply together, we'll get what we're supposed to divide by. Okay. 
So we got x plus 7 minus 7i, and we are going to multiply it by x plus 7 plus 7i. Now this isn't quite FOIL just because there's more to do, but we distribute the x through to all three things. So x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. x times 7i is 7ix or 7xi, whichever way you want to write it is fine. Then we distribute the next thing to all three, so we distribute the seven to x, seven and seven i. Seven times x is seven x. Seven times seven is 49. And seven times seven i is 49 i. And then one more thing to do, we have to distribute the negative seven i through to all three as well. Negative 7i times x is negative 7ix. Negative 7i times 7 is negative 49i. And finally, negative 7i times positive 7i is negative 49i squared. What you should see happen here is everything with just an i goes away. The 49i cancels out with the negative 49i. The 7ix cancels out with the negative 7ix. And remember the i squared, that's not a problem because i squared equals negative 1. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write what we are left with. We got x squared, I'm not going to combine any like terms yet, plus 7x. That's gone, plus 7x, plus 49. And then all three of these are gone, and negative 49 times negative 1 is positive 49. And now we'll combine our like terms. x squared is the only x squared term. 7x plus 7x is 14x, and 49 plus 49 is 98. All right, what we just figured out, I know this took a while. It doesn't seem like we've really done anything uh, part of the problem, but we've actually figured out the main work. We need to divide by x squared plus 14x minus or plus 98. Now, one thing I'll definitely say here, anytime you do a problem like this, you're never going to do synthetic division because you're always going to get an x squared. So that's why you have to learn polynomial division. All right, so now we're going to divide x cubed plus 17x squared plus 140x plus 294 by x squared plus 14x plus 98. Let's go ahead and set that up. We're dividing. What we're dividing by is x squared plus 14x plus 98, and what we are dividing into on the inside, x cubed plus 17x squared plus 140x plus 294. Now, as long as you did this step right, and then you end up doing the polynomial division right, your remainder should be zero, like from dividing last time. But we know what goes on top. We divide the leading terms. x cubed over x squared, which is just x. And now we distribute that through. x, x times x squared is x cubed. x times 14x is 14x squared. And x times 98 is 98x. I don't think, I feel like that might be a problem. It's too light. Let me re do that. 
I can see it, but I'm not sure if everyone will be able to see it on their computer. Okay, so x cubed plus 14x squared plus 98x. And then switch the signs. When we do long division, we switch the signs or subtract. Whichever way you like to write it down. As long as we've done everything right, the x cubed should cancel. They do. 17x squared minus 14x squared is 3x squared. 140x minus 98x is 42x. And bring the 294 straight down. All right, and now, are we done? The answer is no. The degree down here is not less than the degree over here. We divide again. 3x squared over x squared is 3. Divide our leading terms. And we got a positive 3 up top. We distribute the 3 through. We get 3x squared. 3 times 14x is 14x. 42x. 3 times 98 is in fact 294. You can check that on your calculator. And if we switch the signs, subtract all these, you may have already seen what will happen. They all cancel out. The 3x squared, they're gone. The 42x's are gone. The 294 is gone. We got 0. Right. Once you're here, you've really done the whole problem, and I'll sh point out why. If we write down what f of x equals, once again, f of x equals q of x, which is the top, x plus 3, times g of x, the thing we divided by, x squared plus 14x plus 98, and then plus the remainder, which is 0. Now this thing isn't necessarily factored, but remember where this came from, x squared plus 14x plus 98 came from multiplying these two things. But you actually know how to factor this already. We got x plus 3. And x squared plus 14x plus 98 is x plus 7 minus 7i seven and x plus 7 plus 7i. Seven okay, that is f of x factored. Notice that there's no x squareds anywhere or any powers of x higher than 1 inside a factor. That's how we know we're factored. And then the zeros. Once again, we know where these back two came from. We had the zeros of negative 7 plus 7i and negative 7 minus 7i. And then the front thing, if the zero here is negative 3. We take the opposite sign or we set it equal to zero. Like we had mentioned at the beginning, the number of zeros must exactly be 3, and it is. It doesn't matter if they're complex or real. That is it. All right, so, and so as far as um, factoring um, polynomials, that's my expectations. I know, once again, I'll reiterate, I know that it, these problems take quite a bit of time, but remember... This is one out of six sections on the test. It's not the entire test. So you do want to learn it. And really the important thing, you know, think about the main topics in this section. You know, even though the last parts were the main topics, it was still only really half of what we're talking about. You need to know, know how to use the remainder and factor theorem, and you need to know how to use the rational zeros theorem. But that is 3.6.